Hello, my name is Aaron. I'm with Monolithic Power Systems in San Jose, California, and I wanted to give an update on our open source automated bag valve mass project. If you're unfamiliar with this project, this is an initiative by MPS in which we hope to uh, utilize our experience and expertise in power electronics and motion control to provide guidance and support to others working on this type of project. There are a lot of open source projects out there following this type of design, and we've been following the MIT project pretty closely as they are a very, a very good reference uh, to help us understand the clinical requirements as well as learn from the uh, testing and discussions that they've had with the medical personnel in their area. And this is our hope to do our part and help the community fight off the impact of COVID-19. Since our first video, we received lots of positive feedback and connections from groups and, and companies and individuals from around the world. Uh, communication from people offering their support as well as others seeking our support. We're engaged with those folks and very excited to be making progress on that front. A few days ago, we had the opportunity to connect our system to a test lung simulator device. We have been very fortunate to have the help and support of Dr. Brett Miller of the Santa Clara Valley Medical Foundation. Dr. Miller has been able to provide great information for us to understand and implement into our system, as well as provide the opportunity to use the test device. The test lung simulator not only measures tidal volume and interlung pressure while the automated bag valve mask is working, critically you can also adjust the compliance of the test lung to more, mimic, more accurately mimic what a COVID-19 patient would exhibit. Under the stricter compliant, more com uh, the reduced compliance of the test lung, and while trying to maintain a positive expiratory pressure, we were able to monitor our motor performance and saw that we were unable to deliver the amount of tidal volume that was necessary. And it was important for us to see that uh, versus being able to test only with a simple test lung, which is more of an ideal scenario. So with that information, we plan to upgrade our motor to a larger NEMA 17 smart motor that we have, up from the 38 watt motor that we started with up to about an 80 watt motor, as well as modify our squeezer, uh, our squeeze pad geometry to enable more volume to be delivered. So we'd like to thank Dr. Miller again for that great opportunity as it was invaluable for us to learn and to understand uh, how we can improve our device. Here I'd like to go over some of the updates we've done since our last video. The most obvious would be that we've cleaned up our wiring and moved the control knobs and interface to a control panel in the box in the front for a cleaner overall layout. We also implemented a, a full e-stop setup as well as the audible alarm and visual alarm that you will see on the screen when we lose input power. As you can see, the system continues to run with our backup battery power path management. And the alarm will silence itself once the condition is cleared. We can also silence the alarm with the silence button. But as, as, as you can see, the alarm notification stays there until we reconnect power and get back to normal. We've also implemented a homing function for our arms, our squeeze arms. We don't have a limit switch, but use the current sensing function built into our smart motors to allow the squeeze arms to open until they hit a hard stop, and we can detect that current spike to use as our repeated zero home position. We are also monitoring system pressure with the pressure sensor on our board and the tubing connected to a port on the BVM. Currently, we're only showing real-time pressure. We still need to implement some algorithms so that we can detect and display the appropriate peak pressure, plateau pressure, and peak pressures for each cycle. We've also in integrated a simple 
bag retaining strap that is simply an elastic band that is retained on the back with some screws. And so this can be easily removed to allow manual intervention if anything were to happen to the system. The next steps for us with our system are to swap in our larger 77 watt MPS smart motor, continue to develop and implement our pressure monitoring and alarm functionality, and hopefully get another opportunity to evaluate our system with the test lung simulator. We also plan to compile our design documentation and make those available for reference. That would include our commercial parts bomb, our mechanical design models and build notes, high level circuit diagrams, and our Arduino code for our system. There's still a lot of features that are required for a device like this to be approved for medical use. So we'll continue to work on those features and improve our device's functionality. In the meantime, we hope to continue making connections with groups around the world and support them working on their projects so we can all do our part to help fight this global pandemic. And if your group is interested in our device and has experience navigating the regulatory and manufacturing challenges involved with bringing a medical device to market, please contact us. We definitely want to hear from you. Thank you everyone for watching and please be safe.